So we're in our paint department now, Neil. And one thing that we do that is unique, and some others do it, but maybe not that many, is we take the time to prep and paint all of our exterior hatches. So as an example, here is a lower fridge vent. They all come standard white, and a lot of manufacturers will just take that white and put it onto their van and call it a day, where we're now gonna prime this, we're gonna sand it, and then we're gonna paint it to match the exterior of the vehicle. So over here is an example. Here's a finished one. So as you can see, oh nice. That's all the time. That's a lot of time in paint prep, sanding, finishing, spraying, just to get that to match the outside of the vehicle exactly. It blends in and it makes it look really good. So these are paint, are these painted with the exact same paint that's used on the chassis? Yes, yeah, so it's a glazerate paint and we use the matching paint product line and the color obviously to get us that perfect match on the outside of the vehicle. Yeah, because I was gonna say like this is perfectly matching yeah. to it, it's amazing. So here's another example of something unique and this is kind of in two parts. So this piece here is a fiberglass molded piece that we create and you can see it matches exactly. So what this piece is, is on the top of the van of a Mercedes this gives us a flat spot to mount the air conditioner so we know it's going to seal and that it's you're not going to have water intrusion on it but we take the time to actually paint this that the air conditioner is going to cover that unless you're standing on your roof you would never really know existed but it's just another step in our process of making sure we're building the best van we can build also yeah, I was you know, wondering what are those numbers yes <laughs> so that's the last six of the serial number of the specific van it's gonna go on to. So every part has a serial number and we always know where it's gonna go and end up. So there's no mix matching. I grabbed a silver one with a different number or a generic part and it lands on a wrong unit. Every piece has a home. So this is specifically matched to a van chassis that is here in the factory. Yeah, absolutely. And somebody takes the time to write the last six digits of the serial number on it. Great. So as we carry on here, these are two of our five spray booths that we have. Inside here is where we're gonna paint all of those small parts, our roof parts, our caps, all the wide body pieces all get done in these two booths. Why are they sealed like this, just for? Uh, these are called downdraft booths. So specifically when you're spraying, it'll suck all the paint and everything down through the floor so you get a clean paint job. Ah, okay. You don't have like, particles flying everywhere? No, and... not at all, okay. no. It's, it's how you keep a clean environment inside. Gotcha. So this is the part of our paint department where we paint all of the exterior plastic trim moldings on Mercedes and Dodge Promaster vans. So as you can see here, Rob, part of the process is once the part has been washed, we use a flame heat process, and what it does is it draws the oils of the plastic up to the surface where once he's done, we're going to prep it again, then it'll get primed, and then it'll get painted. And this process has to be done on every single plastic part. So you can see here where we've racked them all. These will all be specific to one unit. All the moldings will come off. All the moldings will get this same flame process done. Then they'll get primed and get painted and then reattached on. So this is the way you get it from, let's say, Mercedes? Yes and then by the time it's gonna look like this. That's exactly what it's gonna do. For all these pieces we see back all here. All these pieces that you see everywhere. Have to go here. through the same process. All the same labor intensive process. Wow. And how long does it take? How long, let's say from that to this, how long will that take? Oh, probably 10, 15 hours worth of labor. Now, there's quicker and easier ways of doing it. You could just tape off a van and spray the moldings right on and, and you know, live with it but that's not the way that we want to do it we want to make sure when that part gets reestablished onto the side it's painted all the way around if you mask it and tape it off you're going to see black underlying right from that part and that's where moisture can get in and start flaking off that paint so you're saying so i'm looking here dean yeah can we walk over here sure so i'm looking here the, so these are some of the side moldings for the paneling right on the van right are these things i'm seeing here so those have to all individually be removed yes these are all individual like a christmas tea tab and each one you have to pop off painstakingly 
and then put them all back on precisely. And that sounds time consuming. It's time consuming and when they break that's about a four dollar clip. So it's there's a lot of process that goes into getting this done. And so this is so for Pleasure Way, this is important to you. This is so you know, you get a full coating of the paint and it looks right and you're not yeah. going to see behind it. You're or... not, right? So this edge here is going to be painted. If it was painted on the van, this would end up being usually black because you can't get in there. And then if moisture gets in underneath that paint, this is all going to flake off. And so all these parts we're seeing here were removed from the stock chassis that came from the yeah. the Yeah, and they'll all go back on that identical chassis. Which is labeled right there, I see. Yeah. So is that also, that's the serial number? Uh, yes, that's the one that it's gonna go on to. Cool. Love that. So here's just another example. This is a set for a Ram ProMaster. So each piece has come off. We have to string them up with wire. They're gonna get the process that we just saw. It'll roll into the paint booth and this will all get painted. So this is literally, as we see here, where you've had to pull off the paneling. Yes. And these are the little tabs that we saw, some of them broken. Yeah, some break, some you can, you know, survive. It's, uh, but that's what you have to do in order to get it back on and keep maintaining that OEM quality. So now, Neil, we're in what we call our subflooring department. So as you can see here, we're putting down our subfloor that we're gonna build all of our cabinetry on top of. So one of the things that we do is to make sure you will have a level flat floor so that when our subfloor goes down, it's not going to rock because it's not flat and level. Is that the slatting that we see back there? Right. So you can see where we have our metal hangers through the floor and there's naturally incurring ribs in the floor itself. If you don't and you put down your subfloor, it's, it's potential for it to rock and it may not be level and we're gonna build our cabinets on top of it. So we need a flat surface to start with. So as you can see, we put our slats down to give us a level floor. Then we're going to glue our subfloor on top of it and it's all cut by the router so it's precisionly designed. It almost interlocks like a jigsaw puzzle. And then once it's glued down, we're gonna go along and reinforce the glue by screwing it down as well. So you're gluing it and, and you're screwing, screwing it, it down. Absolutely. And we also span our subfloor from wall to wall so that every piece has a solid flat starting point for all the cabinets. Yeah, I've noticed some manufacturers have just maybe the center aisle. Is that yeah, correct? yeah, they'll just put, uh, you know, wherever you're going to have linoleum, right. they'll put plywood down as the subfloor and they won't worry about what's underneath the cabinets because you probably aren't going to see it, right. but it doesn't mean that it's right. But this is ed edge to edge in this. As front, edge to edge. Front to back. Yep. Right. Okay. So also in this department, Neil, we install all of our exterior windows. So here's a Ram ProMaster. They're just getting ready to install the windows. Once the windows all get in, it's gonna get seal teched to make sure all of these windows are watertight and we're not gonna have leaks. So this is a window here, right? Yes. This is the panel here? Yep. That's gonna fit in? It's gonna fit in. And now also, we're one of the few that actually use the full piece of glass. You'll find a lot of pro masters that this will be solid metal and they're gonna cut out a small hole yeah. and they're gonna put in a smaller window. Right. Which we feel just makes a motorhome feel smaller inside. So we always try to use the biggest pieces of glass and window we can to give you the biggest feeling inside the coach. And these are glass. This is glass. This is not plastic, this is glass. No, it's glass and they also are the jealousy so they're gonna open up and vent at the bottom so you can keep them open if it's raining. So it'll get sealed and then when we attach it, there's a trim ring you can see inside that sucks it up to the side of the van and that's how it mounts into the side and so of the van. You, you cut these openings? Yes. Here? Yeah. And so I noticed uh, this is like uh, ready to be, but it's like finished. It's even like painted and... Uh... Yeah, this is a special, uh, for simple term, we'll call it like a putty tape. Yeah. So this is where the glass is going to go up and seal against. And then on the inside, it's going to get sucked together with a trim ring. I see. What's happening over here? Because this looks like a mechanical spider coming through the holes. <laughs> yes, it is a little intimidating. But what we're doing here is, so we, to maintain that automotive look, yet we have to install a fridge. So we needed to create a fiberglass panel. This is fiberglass. This is fiberglass. So that we can have our upper fridge vent, so we can vent it properly. Yet, if you look at the two, 
It looks like glass. It looks like glass. So it maintains that sleek look without giving it away. It, that's stealthy. How do you do that? How do you make it look? I mean, it literally looks exactly like glass. Well, the original piece is a rough template and a mold for us to make the fiberglass piece from. And then it all comes down to the skill of our painters and, and painting it simply with that high gloss. And high gloss black is a delicate color. It, it shows scratches. It's, you know, so we have to be very careful, but the finished product, it's a mirror image of the glass. Yeah, it looks like a hole's been cut in the glass. Yeah. <laughs> so right next door to our flooring department where we saw we put down the subfloor, here is where we will attach our running boards if it's a van. And in this case, it's a wide body. Here we're going to put all the exterior storage compartments on and the exterior baggage doors. Now I'll just point out this is a stainless steel hinge, so we're not going to have any issues with rusting and it's an aluminum door and this is a custom made door specifically to our openings so as you can see it too is painted to match exactly and all this work gets done right in this one little bay dean what are these um little blue marks i'm seeing on the side of the van right so this is a finished coach that's come through our main production facility and those little marks are marks made by our quality control department that are indicating they think there is either something in the paint or something that needs to be adjusted or finished again. So they're gonna highlight with either orange dots we'll see later or they'll use a, a blue wax pen and they'll just indicate that there's something there that they don't like. And you know what? Like just a little bit of paint here is yeah, what they're saying. There's something probably in the, this door was painted and it maybe didn't get cleaned up enough here. Yeah. So they're gonna note that so that it gets back and gets done right. I mean, I have to come in maybe to here until I see that blemish. Yeah, and that'll get buffed out and it'll all get taken care of, but our quality control team, that's what they do. Like in, like these things, I can't really see anything. I mean, they're so far away, but clearly someone saw something. Yeah, they okay. use a special light and they get up and they scour the entire coach. It's amazing. <laughs> so Neil, we're in our upholstery department and this is where we make all of our headliners, our seat cushions, we do all the recovering and it's all done in one location in this building. I'm just gonna show you a part here. This is a sofa frame as an example, and here you can see the layers of foam we use. So this is a memory foam, this is a medium density foam, and what we'll do is we'll wrap it in Dacron, and then we'll put our cover over top. The Dacron, what it does is it gives you an extra layer of cushioning, and when you roll your seat cover over, it gives it a nice, round, smooth edge. It's not choppy, you don't feel those seams. And as you can see, give that a push, it's... Yeah, it's thick. I mean, this is like yeah. at least two thirds of the thickness. Is this a, like cost-wise, I know you don't like to talk about it maybe, but is this a lot more expensive than... A lot than more, more expensive than regular foam. In, a, in a, seat, a set of cushions that we'd have in an average van, it's probably gonna be about $1,000 worth of foam. Just yeah. a foam. Just a foam. So you could save a lot of money if we use cheap foam, but at the end of the day, you're sleeping on your bed a lot of the time, especially if you're going on long trips. So this also helps when you lay the sofa down and you're making it into a bed, you don't feel the seams between the cushions with memory foam, where if it was a more rigid foam, you'd feel all those cracks. Now I have to ask the question because it's difficult to see unless you're taking the factory tour. Do you use memory foam on everything, including the Ottomans? Yes, memory foam on the Ottomans. It's all part of the bed. When you're laying down, you're gonna have different pressure points. So we all want it to be even in the same. And it's the same thickness on the Ottomans as it is here. Yes. That explains why when I lay on my ascent, it feels perfectly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you don't feel the seams in between. Right. Yeah, it's just going the extra step to provide comfort to our customers. So you mentioned Dacron, Dean. Can you, what does Dacron look like? What is it exactly? Okay, here, I've got a piece right here I can show you, Neil. So Dacron, it's a soft material that we wrap all of our foam. And what it does is when you put your cover over it, it, it gives you another layer of, of comfort in it. And it also, when we wrap the cover around, it makes a nice, smooth, clean edge. Again, this is above and beyond. I don't know if any other manufacturers do this in their upholstery. This is just what separates us from the rest.